Welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here and checking out the series. You know what to do, like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week, so it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists. And I got one of my all-time favorites, Paul Banks of Interpol, back again. Hello, man. Hi there. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I mean, you're, you're one of my favorite groups, and it's, let me tell you, it's still exciting every single time I hear that there's a new Interpol record. Like, I, I still get those feels that I've been getting for the past, you know, 20 years or so, and this new one, The Other Side of Make Believe, uh, you haven't let us down yet, and, and seriously, your lyrics and poetry are off the charts. I've always been a fan of that, too, but there's something next level happening here. I, it's not a question, I'm just throwing wow. you the compliments. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. That's really, yeah, that's really cool. And I think that's all we hope for as a band is that people have that, you know, excitement when we drop a new record. Yeah. Cool, well, let's, man. yeah, let, let, let's get into it. You, I'll start with the title there, The Other Side of Make Believe, because I do think that's sort of an entry point into uh, some of what we're getting at here on this record. What is the other side? Are, are we talking about the opposite of make believe? Are we talking about the darker side of make believe? What did you have in mind there? Yeah, I think it's more of the sort of like the flip side or the darker side or the, you know, the, the downside. Uh, and I think it's kind of just sort of in reference to, well, I'll tell you what, it's in the song Passenger, I feel like, which is where that lyric, it's a, it's a lyric from the song Passenger. I'm fucking flying here. If you see me kill an insect, you know, <laughs> just don't see me do that. Um, <laughs> So on the song Passenger, it's it's a lyric I think that would apply more to one individual's, I don't know, like self-deception or, you know, like it's it's a lot about kind of narratives that we tell ourselves and the sort of truth versus fiction and the allure that sometimes fiction holds over truth because maybe the truth is too dull or too dark or too, you know, harsh to really process. So we as a species, you know, are really prone to generating stories and, and narratives so I feel like that can apply in the individual level of like you know self-deception rather than sort of facing a harsh truth or I think as we've demonstrated in like recent modern world like although information is theoretically accessible to everybody you'd think that we'd have some kind of like foundational truths that everyone is in accordance with but somehow less than ever do we have that uh, and I feel like a lot of that in recent history has had to do again with kind of like truth maybe being a little dull or I don't know just like truth being really in in like a slippery position where like nobody really I think there's a lot of there's a uh, a dearth of um trust anyway so I think the the lyric and the title um sort of are like one is the personal and then I think it kind of expands on the whole album it's like there's themes of like information and and stories and and you know things like that and deception yeah. so that's really where it's coming from yeah the psychological part of that too i mean not to get too far into that but you know for some folks to think i know something that everybody else doesn't know like they have to they have to know something that everybody else doesn't know and i you know i, I think that a lot of where the conspiracy theories uh you know the past especially the past few years come along with that but but there's that interesting word in passenger it's it's not just that title you use the word fables and you've got a song on here called fables as well like how does that play into it because i feel like uh, it, from what i'm getting anyway it's kind of going in that same direction uh why you'd bring specifically those words up twice um I think for yeah, the very same reasons that, that I was just sort of, you know, musing on, I think it's like, there's like this great purpose to the way that we string ideas together to form cohesive meaning out of chaos. And I think that can be how we've teach, taught ourselves great truths throughout the ages, maybe in the form of fables. But then I feel like it's also like there's this connotation to a fable, which is a bit like a fairy tale. And then it sort of like merges into this other idea of you know, stories as entertainment, but then when it becomes kind of like uh, more harmful than good, uh, even though it's like this sort of innate propensity that we have, and it's like a function of our great imaginations as a species, but it can kind of bump us or bite us in the ass sometimes when we, you know, 
using it as a way of hiding from realities. And I think, you know, just one thing without to go into this rabbit hole, but like just with conspiracy theories and stuff, I do think it's like in some instances, it's like more reassuring almost that there's there's someone in charge that is making decisions and th those decisions are evil but if you find those people you can kind of like you know undo these things but in reality sometimes and sometimes obviously there are great conspiracies that can be unearthed and then other times it's like just more boring that like there's like just chaos and like no one really knows what the fuck's going on and that's like far more uncomfortable as a thing or like that mother nature can kind of come along and just like wipe everybody out is like very uncomfortable and it's almost more reassuring to be like, oh, there's like some evil villains that are, you know, at play here who could be theoretically caught and brought to account as opposed to just like a force of nature who just like wipe us all out from one day to the next. So anyway, I think it's like kind of all of those sort of thoughts, which I even myself kind of like waver back and forth between, you know, what I even myself think is plausible versus, you know, not plausible. So it's, you know, I'm in it as well, you know, this kind of like weird era yeah. So, so you know, with, with the characters in those songs who, you know, we talk about fables, like what do the yeah. guileless angels represent? Uh, I guess what's it like, um, uh, I would say in that there's like poem and fucking fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like we're guided by our better angels? Like there's some like quote that I think they use even in like Saving Private Ryan. I think it's kind of like, you know, I think that speaks to sort of like our better nature. And um, yeah, are, are more sort of like um, altruistic um, tendencies, you know, that goodness exists, I think is those, those are the guileless angels, you yeah. know, no agenda, just like those, those things that we do selflessly. Yeah, it's interesting kind of finding the balance, uh, not the balance, the, um, the, the both sides of it, because you do have the guileless angels and you have someone like Mr. Credit. Uh, which is kind of what have been one of my favorite uh -huh. songs on the record because Mr. Credit to me comes off like like Mr. Credit wants to be seen as a guileless angel but uh, I, th I think you even said in another place like uh, you, but you can't trust him yeah 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 that's uh that's an interesting character in that song and that's yeah, that song is interesting because that comes from a working title that was uh, one of Daniel's working titles and I believe he got that from a Fritz Lang film called M um and yeah mr credit is dead and buried uh, is a lyric is a is a quote from the film and so daniel like had it titled as mr credit and then he told us that that was like the line of dialogue and i just sort of incorporated it and kind of expanded from there but i do think that the character uh especially in the chorus is a sort of a um yeah it's like it's it sounds like a good guy but you know he's he's not yeah no it's fun uh I want to quickly pull up one more track here. I know we're kind of running short on time, but Renegade Hearts. You know, I was talking about those lyrics. Call me from any age and hope that godly will help to steer. Subliminal, we turn the page, but you can't save the programmable fears. That's, like, you made me work on this record a little bit, too. Like, <laughs> to set and kind of, to sit with those. But but even in that song, like, you've got eternity, infinity, and a million years, you know, as as words in three different lines here. Uh, what are you envisioning at that point? Like, I'd love to know how that works within the bigger story that we're talking about. I think in that song, I love that song. And I think that it's um, almost kind of like, a, it's a little bit like, you know, three generations post-apocalyptic, you know, like multiple civilizations into the future. Um, and then I think it sort of gets anchored more clearly in the outro as being, I like this sort of like, um, I think sometimes I play with love stories, but that the context wherein that love is existing or surviving is maybe a little bit like post-apocalyptic. So in that song, it's kind of, yeah, envisioning a, a future where stock is being taken, but it's like not even necessarily this future, but maybe like the next one on. And I think it's just kind of like, yeah, I don't even consciously um, implement the same kind of like themes throughout the lyrics of the song. It's sort of like songs almost like want to be something uh and i just kind of like let that happen and so that song i think started with the the lyric um the serpent spins and uh yeah just kind of went from there yeah. but it's it's true it's interesting for me like the the lyrics are always kind of from a very authentic place for me but also somewhere that's like very hard for me to really unpack them and i've i've never had a great inclination 
to unpack them. And I think as I've gone on in my career, I'm even more interested in sort of just like what comes out of like the subconscious. And when I'm presented with music that speaks to me, like such as the music that Daniel writes, like these ideas kind of like, they come first in the form of melody. And as I've gone through my career, it's like the, the time it takes me to have the melody versus when I get the lyric has like the gap has narrowed to sometimes now I just get them all at the same time. And I feel like there's something very, on the one hand, you could you could definitely argue as a writer, well, like, well, then you should work more. But on the other hand, I think because the form is like essentially, you know, rock music, I feel like there's almost something that's been really, I'm happy that I've chosen instead to kind of cultivate that instinct of just like something's in the subconscious that's coming out and this is it. And I feel like in some ways, maybe there's even more meaning in that. And so it's on the one hand, difficult to unpack, but on the, on the other hand, I feel like it is very rich of meaning for me. Yeah. It's interesting. You know, we were talking about it before the interview, uh, REM, it, Michael Stipe you know, criticized a little bit for some people that they couldn't understand his lyrics. And he said, for the most part, he didn't put a lot of thought into them in the early days until he realized people were getting so much out of them. He thought, oh, I better work at this a little bit more and put that meaning there. I appreciate that meaning, I think is what I'm getting yeah. at there, because when it all comes out like that, like it is, there's, there's some really great poetry all, all throughout this. And um, thank you very much. Yeah. And the way it works with that music, uh, you know, it's almost carnivalesque it's sometimes with the guitar parts. Um, yeah, it's it's such an interesting, playful thing that you all have going on. And, and the drums, I know, again, I'm running out of time here, but uh, all three of you it's just the way it's working together it's such an interesting record um yeah i could go on oh. about that <laughs> thank you I, I think flood flood really helped us get the best performances out of ourselves and out of each other too i think he really helped kind of um guide the chemistry yeah i i'll, I'll close with this quickly i i know that uh um meet me in the bathroom which tells the story of course of, uh, of the early days the new york scene is finally getting a documentary uh have you been able to watch that yet is that something on your radar I didn't read it and I didn't watch it. Um, I feel, you know, the author, Lizzie Goodman, is a close friend of mine. And I participated in the book because I trust her and she was there. And I think she's very, very intelligent. And I felt like if anyone was going to do an you know, authoritative uh, depiction of that moment in time, she was absolutely qualified to be that person. So I kind of gave myself over to her with a lot of honesty. But I feel like that's the kind of honesty that like, I don't even want to read <laughs> what I told her. And, uh, you know, and I and I also worked with the filmmakers and I had a real sense of trust that they knew what they were doing, that they were coming from the right place as well. But, you know, it's like when you hear yourself on an answering machine, but like 5000 times worse <laughs> when you read yourself in print or hear yourself in a film, at least for me. So I, I don't really intend to watch it, but I think it's uh, legit. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. I, I loved the book. I did a uh, bit of a Bible for uh, certain times anyway. Research. Cool. Uh, Paul, congratulations again. The new Interpol record, The Other Side of Make Believe, is is fantastic. I love it. I love you guys every single time. Dude, it was great catching up, and uh, and thanks for taking the time today. Thank you very much, and thank you for those kind of words.